Hello, this video is part two of my entry to Handman Network Learning Jam. This is a new jam that happens on two weekends. The first weekend you pick a topic and you try to learn as much as you can about it. And the second weekend you tell uh, fellow members of the community about what you just learned. So I chose the topic of color and uh, in my first video I uh, discussed how we perceive color. I explained how we can drive color matching functions and how we can build the XYZ color space and how this color space allows us to match colors between different kind of displays using different kind of primary colors like uh, red, green and blue light for computer displays or CMYK inks uh, for printers. In this video, I will talk about uh, gamma correctness and the sRGB color space taking examples from the Orca vector graphics renderer. But first, let's talk a little bit about how, uh, what gamma is. So historically, um, we used uh, CRT monitors to display images from computers. And the thing is with uh, CRT displays, uh, they don't have a linear response. So if I have some input voltage that I send to my CRT display, the resulting uh, intensity of light uh, won't be some in some linear relationship to the voltage, but more something like a power curve, where uh, the intensity is proportional to V at some power gamma. And for a C uh, typical CRT, gamma would be something like 2.2. So what this means is that if you encode the pixels in your image uh, linearly and you send those values to uh, some uh, voltage controller and the output voltage gets sent to the CRT, uh, the CRT will apply that curve to your values and um, your uh, light intensities in your image will get distorted. So what they did at the time was that they encoded images um, using the reciprocal uh, transformation. So this means that if I have like an RGB uh, color that I want to encode, I will actually apply uh, the power of one over gamma. And that is the color that I will um, encode in my image format. And then when I read my image from disk, I can send it directly to the CRT without uh, any kind of processing. And the CRT will apply um, the, its own uh, gamma curve. So I will get my code value uh, rate at the power of gamma. And uh, evidently the, the, the two gamma will cancel out and I will get the correct value um, at the outputs. And this encoded value, uh, which is the RGB value at, uh, raised at the power of one over gamma, um, is said to be in the encoded in sRGB. So um, now we don't use CRTs anymore, uh, but uh, modern screens still use that same response curve uh, for compatibility reasons because like uh, every image format basically used that kind of coding. But there is another reason why it is interesting to use um, that encoding. And it has to do with the fact that we don't perceive uh, light intensity linearly either. So uh, if I have some incoming uh, light with, with some intensity and I want to plot the perceived uh, brightness of that light, I will get something like this curve. And this is also somewhat of a power curve where um, the perceived brightness would be proportional to L uh, at some power, let's say gamma prime to not confuse it with the gamma of a CRT. And it just so happens that that gamma prime um, is approximately equal to one over the gamma of my CRT. Um, what this curve means is that if I have some uh, increment in light intensity in the dark tones, 
I will perceive a bigger increment in brightness than if I have the same increment of light intensity uh, in lighter uh, tones, where I will get some small increment in perceived brightness. Another way to look at it is that if I uh, draw a gradient where my light intensity goes from 0 to 1 and uh, linearly, um, I will get uh, from uh, dark to light gray very quickly and most of the space will be occupied by um, light gray and white tones that I can't really distinguish. Um, so this means that if I want to encode uh, my uh, light intensities linearly, so if I want to quantize those uh, value with uh, equally spaced uh, steps, uh, I will spend um, a good number of bits encoding uh, shades that I can't really distinguish uh, in the light grays and whites. And conversely, I won't have enough bits to encode all the different shades of dark grays and blacks that I can um, distinguish. So uh, it makes sense to, to try to use our bits more efficiently. And what we can do for that is that if I have some, um, some uh, light signal that is like an analog uh, signal or a high definition signal, I can apply uh, this curve to it. Um, and this is the thing I will quantize. Um, and so this means that uh, the thing I'm quantizing is more like the perceived brightness. So I will encode the perceived brightness with equally spaced um, uh, quantization steps. Uh, and this means I will uh, spend my bits more efficiently and I can spend less bits to encode more uh, shades. And if I send that to a CRT monitors, which has um, the reverse, um, the reverse uh, gamma, uh, this will cancel out and I will get the correct light intensity at the output with less errors in the dark tones where I'm, uh, I can uh, perceive more fine differences and uh, more errors in the, in the whiter and uh, tones uh, where it doesn't really make enough uh, difference for me to perceive. So let's open an image editor and draw some gradient to illustrate that. So I will draw some gradient uh, in this rectangle uh, and I will go from black to white. And I will choose to uh, blend the, the colors in linear space. So you can see here that most of the, um, of the black and uh, dark tones are on the far left here, and we quickly progress to lighter tones, uh, and most of the space is actually lighter gray and white. If I do the same thing, um, but this time uh, the um, I will blend colors in sRGB space, um, I will get another kind of gradient. So here I will select what they call perceptual RGB, which is in fact uh, sRGB. And this time you see that we have a different gradient where the, um, the space is much more uh, equally distributed between uh, dark tones and lighter tones. And the gray in the middle um, looks more like uh, the mix of um, black and white, even though the gradient on the top is like the correct linearly blended one. So uh, now we can also mix uh, colors. 
So let's say uh, I want to mix some red with um, with some green. Uh, and I will do an sRGB gradient going from oh, didn't take my green here okay so I'm doing gradient from red to green in sRGB space and you can see that the color in the middle is somewhat muddied and darker because I'm not actually um, doing a linear interpolation between red and green. Uh, I'm doing a linear interpolation between these colors encoded in sRGB space. So these colors raised at the power of one of a gamma. Um, so if I change that and I'm doing a linear RGB gradient, you can see that um, uh, we are progressing from red to white um, in a somewhat more natural way, I would say. Uh, at least we don't have this, this darkened spot in the middle where the colors are a bit muddied and, and uh, change uh, you. So we still have some change of hue, um, obviously, uh, in the middle, but it, it seems to progress more linearly between the red hue and the green uh, hue and not transitioned by some kind of, um, of uh, brown brownish uh, tone. So um, there are other um, ways to illustrate how um, how sRGB and um, gamma can affect blending colors. Um, and it shows up when rescaling images because like when you rescale an image, you will take like several pixels and blend them to produce a new pixel for your smaller uh, image. And if you do that in sRGB space, you can get actually uh, very incorrect results. And so there is this um, this uh, funny web page here where it explains all the problems with uh, doing uh, rescaling in um, in sRGB space. And so, for example, you can have an image like this, um, which is a picture of the Dalai Lama uh, interleaved with some stripes of colors. And if you resize that image uh, in sRGB space you get some kind of a gray block like that. Whereas if you correctly resize it and blend colors in linear space, you will get the correct uh, resized image. And you have the more offensive version of that after all the explanations uh, here, um, where you have an image uh, that if you rescale it, to 50% of its size, uh, it will tell you um, very abruptly if you're doing your blending in linear space or in sRGB space. So let's see how the Orca Vector Graphics Renderer uh, deal with that. Uh, currently, I'm not doing any kind of gamma correction. Um, it's just like assuming uh, it receives uh, linear values and sends a linear value to the screen. So um, it's uh, likely not to handle that. So we'll see how it goes and we'll try to make the Orca Vector Graphics Renderer uh, gamma correct. So what I can do is uh, open my small skeleton application here. Uh, so it is a very simple application that just opens a window and um, I'm just clearing the screen to some cyan color for now. So let's compile that and uh, let's run that. So I have my uh, blank page here, and what I can 
uh, do is try to do some gradients. So the way I can do that, uh, I can do that in two ways actually. So I can uh, draw small rectangles with small color increments uh, to produce a gradient, or I can just ask for the renderer to produce that gradient on the GPU. And uh, depending on how the renderer is set up um, regarding uh, gamma correctness, um, this could give some different uh, results if I messed up the, the gamma correction. Uh, so both might be interesting to have as testing points. So let's uh, do some kind of loop. And let's say I will have uh, 64 steps or something. And I will uh, set some color. based on that uh, index. So uh, that would be 4 times A over 2 to 6. And 1. And I will draw some rectangle at 10 plus, let's say I give them a 8 pixel wide. Um, I will see rectangle fill. So I have my first uh, my first gradient, and uh, we can see right away that um, this doesn't look right um, because I'm not doing any gamma correction in my renderer, so I'm just sending some values that are um, that are uh, linearly uh, going from black to white. And what I'm seeing here is not a linear uh, gradient. So let's do the same thing, um, but do the gradient in the GPU. And we'll just get some Y here. So um, we can increment it with whatever our uh, previous height was. And so I can say directly uh, OC set gradient and pass it uh, four colors for each, um, uh, for each corners of my rectangle. And so I will pass uh, black here uh, white on the bottom right and uh, white on the top right and black on the top left uh, and I will say rectangle fill uh, at 10. Why uh, I want it to be um, 8 times 6, 4 wide and 28. And I will add 25 to my Y. And so I get uh, another gradient done in the GPU, and we see that they are um, like minus the 
quantization that happens on the first gradient because I'm just like uh, drawing small rectangles. Um, we have the same kind of gradient here. But these two are not actually uh, correct. Um, what I will do is I will try to mix uh, colors to, to see what happens, but I already know that these are not correct. So I will try to, um, uh, to mix these, um, these colors and this should look somewhat like, like this. Um, and I will do the same thing. So let's come in a little bit um, back to white, linear CPU. Black to white linear GPU, uh, and we'll say red to green uh, linear CPU, red to green linear GPU. So if I'm going from red to green, uh, I'm going to multiply that by um, well, it will be like two fifty five minus um, minus this, um, and here I have to set. Uh, the blue channel to zero. And here, uh, so I have a red here, um, or green here, and red here. And let's see if it's correct. So it's correct with respect to my expectation of it being incorrect, uh, which is that we get this like muddled brownish uh, color in the middle and or um, black to white gradients um, are not really correct. Um, so another thing I can do um, Well, um, if I'm mixing colors, well, no, what, what, what we can do is directly go uh, straight away to show the images and we'll probably get insulted by the offensive one and we'll probably don't see His Holiness uh, the Dalai Lama. Um, so let's see, I have to create the image uh, in my uh, initialization code here. So I have my renderer. So let's say uh, I want to get the path of that. Um, so where is, uh, where are my resources? Uh, okay, so it's dialing on gray. Um, 
this one would be in resources. Um, and I will open an image with that. Um, Um, I'll see image uh, from path, create from path. I have to pass a router. Uh, oh, expert three. Yeah, I don't want to flip his holiness. Um, do this for um, OC able relative. Um, How is it called to remember? I don't remember my utility string functions. Uh, that will be that. Um, OC fat executable related. Hmm. Oh, I had to pass an arena. So um, Um this is prefix missing. And I actually have to pass the arena from the scratch. And this is okay. Um so I'm not displaying the image right now. Uh, Already limit image rescaled. So uh, OC image row of the line and we'll uh, display that with S10. Why and so the image itself is in the resources folder of my sketches and the size of the image is 258 uh, 2022. Um, I'm doing this. Yeah, correct. Um, and so let's see. Uh, of course, it's equal. And sure enough, uh, we got a grayed out um, image. So we already know what message we will uh, read on the next image, but we'll do it anyway because we sometimes need to be told the hard truth. Um, so, yeah. Um, I know. Offensive path. Um, 
and this one is going like that. And um, um, okay. And this time we must rescale it to uh, 256. And 128. And yeah, it sucks. Um, it's not as clear as I would have hoped from the from the image. Um, it just might not be entirely incorrect. I know. Anyway, point is um, the the, the non-intuitive thing is that uh, I'm not doing any gamma correction anywhere. I'm just dealing with uh, values directly, um, and I'm I'm asking for a frame buffer that is like a linear um, frame buffer, and um, on Dawn, which is the, the implementation of WebGPU that I'm using, uh, currently you you can only do a linear frame buffer. Um, uh, sRGB buffers are not implemented um, right now. So everything seems to be linear, but they are obviously incorrect. And the thing is that um, when, you, when you request a linear frame buffer, it actually means uh, that you are asking the GPU to to not make any uh, correction before sending the values to the screen, but the screen itself will still apply its own gamma. And when you ask for an sRGB frame buffer, you actually ask the GPU like to encode the linear values that you give him into sRGB before uh, sending them to the screen that will decode them as being sRGB. So if you're not doing anything with sRGB and using a linear frame buffer, you're actually uh, using sRGB values all along. And um, so all the mixing we are doing, whether it be in the CPU or um, in the GPU, um, all of that mixing uh, is done in sRGB space, which is um, which is, yields uh, incorrect results. So what we are going to do is that we are going to uh, change um, how we send uh, final uh, color values to the screen. And so, as I said, I can't re I can't really. Um, request WebGPU for an sRGB buffer because it's not implemented in Dawn yet, but what I can do is that I can um, encode the values myself. Um, and so to do that, I will open my um, final shader where I, where I blitz um, the final pixel values to screen after all the, the drawing is done. And right here, you see that uh, we have done all our rendering with, um, with compute shaders on an intermediate texture. And we are just like loading the color from that texture and sending it um, to screen as is. So if here I'm actually encoding that color to be in sRGB space. Um, that would be a vector 
um, F. Uh, well, can, can I do just pow of color and I have to broadcast that to the back for f of um, my gamma values. So that would be 45, 45, 45 for the red, green, and blue channels, and my uh, and I guess my alpha has to stay the same because this is not like um, encoding a color. Um, and so maybe this should look more correct. Um, so I have to actually compile uh, the new version of the platform layer. So Orchidev build platform layer. And I have to rebuild my program. So what what happens here um, is that now our gradients are correct, but our images um, look a lot lighter than they should. Um, and this is because uh, so we are encoding the values at the outputs of our um, of our uh, renderer in sRGB, but the values we get from images are actually already encoded in sRGB, and we were just like loading those sRGB values and mixing between those and sending them to the screen. So this was like correctly sRGB, but incorrectly mixing sRGB values. Um, and this times we are um, we are applying our sRGB encoding at the end of the pipeline, which is cool for colors that we specify ourselves. But for colors that we load from images and that are already encoded encoded in sRGB, we are actually uh, applying the sRGB transformation twice, and so we get um, we get lighter gray values. So um, what we can do here is that for images we can ask um, we can ask uh, WebGPU for sRGB textures, which means that when we will load values from those textures in our shader, uh, it will actually decode those values into linear space and then our shader only deals with linear uh, colors and then does the encoding into sRGB space at the very end. Um, so I can do that um, in my renderer. And um, I guess when I'm doing OC image create, So Emacs is painful and slow because of screen recording. Um, okay, so here I'm building my texture descriptor and uh, you see that the texture format I'm asking for is RGBA U norm. But I'm actually like decoding values from the images and these images are encoded in uh, sRGB space. So this means I'm just passing sRGB values along without decoding them. And if I add sRGB here, this should, um, this should correctly decode them.
and here we are. So here we are uh, correctly decoding the sRGB images into linear values, doing all the rescaling um, and all the color mixing in uh, linear space. And at the very uh, final step, we are encoding in sRGB and we are uh, sending sRGB values to the monitors, which will apply its own gamma and uh, we get the correct um, the correct uh, color values. So we can see the, the Dalai Lama and we can see that our scaling software rules, uh, which, is, which is nice. So, uh, so now the question is, um, uh, the pipeline looks okay and like not confusing for images, um, but there is a question of how we want to, like there are two questions. There, there is a question of how we want to specify uh, colors in the, in the uh, render API. Do we want user to um, send sRGB colors or linear RGB colors? For example, if they are using like a color picker uh, that gives them um, hex values or they are picking colors from, uh, from the web, most of those colors would be sRGB values. Uh, so do we want our API to send sRGB values to our renderer. So this is one part of the question. The other part of the question is uh, sometimes we might want to do a gradient in a linear space like this. I guess for mixing colors, it's the correct, um, the more correct space to do these things. But for Specifically for monochrome or black to white gradient, um, sometimes it would make sense to have an option to do them in sRGB space uh, because the user might want um, a better uh, distribution of black and white along the gradient. So, So I guess what we can do is actually giving, since we are talking about color spaces and um, I was saying in the first video that if you have just one tuple of numbers, it doesn't tell you really anything about the, the color you are talking about because like it really depends on the, on the, um, display you have um, and, and on which color space you are in. And so it might make sense to add something to our colors uh, that specify uh, which color space we are talking about. So then the, the users can just pass colors in whichever um, color space they want and we will just make sure that uh, values are correctly decoded so that we only deal with linear values in our, uh, in our shaders. As for the gradient, I think it would be sufficient to just have an option in the OC set gradient API that tells if I want the, the blend space of the gradient to, to be um, linear or sRGB. So, so let's do that. Um, so maybe third, first thing I can do is uh, modify how I'm uh, how I'm doing colors here. So you can see that for now colors are just like uh, tuple of RGBA values. And I might want to change that so that we have um, an enum. 
um, that would be a color space, and um, these would be OC color space uh, RGB and OC color space sRGB. And we might want later to have um, HSV, HSL color spaces to specify colors with um, with a different meaning for each of the components. And so here we can just add a tag, which will be called color space. And I guess now we have we need some helpers to build colors. Um, so so OC set color is actually okay because we will pass a color that contains the the RDB values. Uh, OC set color RGBA can be um, can also be like a helper that just build the color um, using our RGBA values. And if I just do something that's um, sRGBA, it will be another helper. Um, and um, yeah, I'm thinking maybe we can also just set um, just set a color space in the context. I don't know, maybe just the, these uh, three would be sufficient for now so that we always have to specify the color space we have and there's no like contextual data that tells us because we could have something like uh, OC uh, set color tuple and it's just like Anonymous, uh, an anonymous tuple of uh, three values. And then the encoding would depend on a color space that you set in the, in the context. And all the other one could be just uh, helpers. Mm, I don't know, for now I might prefer to let that be explicit. Um, yeah, let's do that. And so for the gradient, um, we might want to uh, pass some... Um, some gradient blend space, I guess. Um, Um, well, blend um, linear um, Okay, so now I have to update these APIs um here so 
in my attributes I have to pass um, the gradient blend space Um, and the colors, I don't need to do anything here. Um, so in this common code, so if I have set color, Um, so set color is uh, will stay the same. Well, um, yeah, uh, it will stay the same here. Uh, we have our um, helper functions here that will uh, need some color space value. Um, and the RGB one. So, um, should be okay for here and now when we're sending those colors to the GPU um, if I go to my renderer here and when I'm um, encoding the path I pass the colors to the to the shaders and here I'm just like copying the colors um, directly so I might go for something more like this uh, and path colors um, I equal Well, actually, this will be. I'm only encoding the uh, the first three channels. Um, so, so yeah, it would depend on the the, the color space. So if um, primitive attributes. Whoops, very hard to type when the editor is laggy like that. Um, if attributes colors. Oh, yeah, and I have four colors because uh, this is for the gradient. Kind of confusing myself here. So the so I sent four colors. Um, and for each one, if primitive attributes um, colors i color space equal um, OC color space sRGB. Um, I will need to decode that to linear um, so well, just do that Um, so path colors 
I C G uh, equal um, my primitive attributes colors of I C J and that one would be raised at um, the power two to two. And then I just copy the um, alpha channel directly. Um, okay, else I can just uh, do what I was uh, what I was doing here, but just for one color at a time. Equal primitive attribute colors I and I copy for uh, floats. So I should be correctly copying uh, colors according to the color space um, I'm in. And uh, now I have to pass the gradient mode. So pass path um, land space equal primitive. Attributes uh, land space. This path actually um, has to be updated here, so we will add a member which is land space, and so that will remove some padding at the end. And now I have to update uh, the shaders to take that into account. So I will open uh, my common shader with all my type definitions. Uh, I have to add some blend space here. And I will also update the um, raster part of the shader that does the gradient thing. Um, so it's in this function, next color, if it has a gradient, um, I'm sampling the colors. So I have bottom, top, uh, sample color, and UV, um, okay, so what I will, uh, what I will do here is that I will say, um, so bottom left equal the color we passed here, which is linear space. So we have bottom left, bottom right, uh, top right, and top left. Um, and these colors, um, we want to, to encode them in sRGB if our blending space is sRGB. So if path buffer path index 
blend space equal one. Um, BL equal um, equal bow BL back for F uh, and we want so we have linear colors so we want to encode them to sRGB so we are doing this conversion here and again passing the alpha normally Um, okay, so BR, top right, top left. Now we are doing uh, our sampling um, and our uh, blending as before, except now we are using these. So uh, this is well. This is bottom left. This is bottom right. This is um, top left, and this is top right. Uh, so we are doing our thing here, and then at the end. Uh, if the same condition is true, we uh, decode our next color with the inverse gamma. Which would be 2.2. .2. So let's see if we compile that. Um, so conflicting types for OC set gradients. Yeah, I guess um, OC is a WebGB renderer. Um, let's come OC set gradient. Um, OC vec parameter of uh, incompatible type comes void, so we are in the render. Hmm. Oops. really struggling with the screen recording. So uh, we want a mem copy to colors uh, to colors i which is uh, yeah it's actually not true we want to copy to uh, that address and we want to copy Mm. Have it colors I well this should be correct since the tag is at the end, but I'm not really so that should be uh the Take only the components of that color. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so now we will need to update, yeah, our uh, main file. So, so what I will do now uh, to test uh, that we have the correct um, correct implementations is that we'll go. So we'll go black to white linear. Back to our linear GPU, we we'll add a uh, black to white sRGB GPU. So this one would be OC gradient blend space uh, blend um, linear. And this one will go. Uh, OC gradient blend sRGB we set our colors in RGBA here um, so um, We'll do the same, but black to white sRGB CPU, and then we pass the colors as sRGB here. Um, and we'll do the same here. So I do linear, linear um, sRGB. SRGB um, Okay Let's see. So OC gradient blend, I forgot the blend. Redefinition of uh, Y here. Uh, yeah, we don't want that. So let's run our test program. Uh, so our shader didn't compile and uh, BL cannot assign to let BL. So yeah, that should be a bar instead of a let. So let's recompile the platform layer and rebuild everything. So uh, what do we have here? So we have the correct linear uh, blending gradient for both CPU and GPU. We have uh, correct sRGB blending. Um, for CPU and GPU. Same thing for the colors and our images uh, still look right as expected. So um, I guess that's it for this segment. Uh, we have transformed the Orca vector graphics renderer so that it takes into account um, uh, gamma correction. It does every uh, computation on color on linear space and encodes them to sRGB at the end. Images are correctly decoded from sRGB to linear. And we have options to specify colors along with the, the color space they're intended to be in. And uh, gradients also have the option to be blended uh, in different blending modes. So I'll wrap it up for now. Um, 
maybe in the next video I will talk about uh, different uh, encoding for colors. So um, how to encode colors using uh, hue, saturation and value or hue, saturation and lightness, which are encoding that are uh, more intuitive for, let's say, artists that are more used to uh, mixing colors and mixing uh, paints on a canvas. Um, and maybe we'll also add some uh, color picker widgets to the Orca uh, UI library. So until then, take care and goodbye.